Praise the Lord. While you're turning there, let's bow our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of opening up your word. And Lord, I ask that you would give me the words to preach and to teach this morning, that it would be anointed by the Holy Ghost, all of you and none of me. Lord, may you use me as your instrument, Lord, and that the flesh would be put under and that I would walk and live and think and act in, in and by and through the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that the enemy would be bound and every plan of the wicked one would be under our feet by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony we give the glory and the honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Revel Revelation, the 19th chapter. I'm going to, need to take for a title this morning the words from that song that we just sang there. And we're going to title this The Garment of Praise. Amen. The garment of praise. The Bible says in Revelation 19, verse 1, this is really beginning after the tribulation. So the Bible is giving a depiction here of things that are about to happen after the great tribulation has ended. And of course, everything that we're speaking of is futuristic. This has not happened yet. It says that after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. John says he heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia. Amen. Now, Alleluia, this word occurs four times in the New Testament. And all four times it is right here in this chapter. And Alleluia is the combination of two words together, which means praise and Lord. And so in effect, it means praise the Lord. It says that he heard a great voice saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. The Bible would teach that this great whore in which it is talking about is spiritual Babylon. And we would see that throughout the entirety of the Word of God, the Bible speaks of Babylon in the Old Testament as a literal Babylon, but there is also a spiritual Babylon. And in, the, in, in, the, in all honesty, Babylon today has been destroyed, and it is in effect no more physically. But it will be rebuilt during the Great Tribulation. And the Antichrist will raise up Babylon, and it will be a great place of commerce. It will be, a, if we would keep reading, where God had destroyed in chapter 18, he destroys Babylon. And all of the people that had loved the, the pleasure that was in it, the riches, the gold, the silver, the, the lust of fine things, they mourn that Babylon has fallen. But even more than the physical Babylon that had fallen, there is a spiritual Babylon that even today is alive and well. And it is, in, a, in effect, this great horror that the Bible speaks of. And it is that which mankind has committed spiritual fornication, spiritual adultery with. And anything that we worship other than the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone is spiritual adultery. God has called His church to be a pure bride. We are to be as a bride waiting the return of its groom, pure and chaste and holy, and keeping ourselves unspotted, the Bible tells, of the world, not allowing our garments to become dirtied by the, 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 that which is of the world. And it says here that they cry in heaven, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Pra praise the Lord! And I want to say this morning that we better be putting on the garments of praise. If we don't like praising Jesus in church, if we don't like praising Jesus at home, then I guarantee you, you won't like heaven. Because heaven is all about praising and, and giving worship and glory to Jesus Christ. If we don't like giving Him glory now, then I guarantee you we won't enjoy heaven. So we better get in practice worshiping God now and putting on the garments of praise 
And the Bible even says the sacrifice of praise. Which means it's not always easy to praise the Lord. It's not always easy to raise our hands and give glory and honor to God. Sometimes our hands feel like they're weighted down and they're heavy. And it's, it's so difficult to come. But when we give Him the sacrifice of our praise... And we put on the garments of praise. I guarantee you, you'll begin to see victory in your life. Amen? When you begin to hit a brick wall and it is difficult to pray, just begin to praise His name. When Paul and Silas, we can't forget about those brethren. When they were in the midst of the prison, it bound in the very bowels of the prison. Where it was, it was impossible to escape. It says in an end about midnight. They began to sing praises to God. I don't know what they were singing. I don't know what song they were singing. But no doubt they were singing praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in the Psalms, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. I'm breathing today. Praise the Lord. I have breath in my lungs and God's given me breath. Even if it's a short breath, I'm going to let that breath be praise on my lips to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to sing praise to the Lord because He is good and His mercy endures forever. I'm going to give praise because worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Whenever the Bible speaks of the Lamb without question, He is referring to the cross of Jesus Christ. He is ever our sacrifice. He is ever the Lamb of God that was slain. And when you fill up against the wall and the tears of mourning begin to fill your eyes, and you feel like there's no hope. The Bible would tell us in the beginning of Revelation, John felt that way. He began to weep and to mourn because there was nobody worthy to unlock these seals. But the Lord would say, Behold, look, a lamb that had been slain. Hallelujah. When you're backed up against the wall and life makes you feel like you are being suffocated and there's no breath within you, Look to Jesus, the Lamb of God that was slain. And you'll begin to sing praises to the Lord. You'll begin to see that there's always hope. Amen? Amen. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it says that the whole earth or the whole heavens began to be filled like a great voice. Abounding and astounding with the praises of God. Hallelujah. It says in verse 3, And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Meaning the judgment of the great spiritual Babylon is an eternal judgment. There's coming a day where every religion, every false religion, everything that has exalted itself up above the name of Jesus Christ, whether it is Islam, whether it is even Judaism, whether it is anything that has Put down Jesus Christ. Yes. And let me even add this. Even apostate Christianity. Yes. That which tries to dilute the word of God. Yes. And dilute the blood of Jesus. Yes. Every false religion which the Bible calls a great horror. Will one day be judged by God. And it will be no more. And the only one that will reign. The only one that anybody will look to. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will be the judge within our midst. And every believer will shout and praise his holy name. And give glory to God. I want to do it right now. Amen. Amen. I don't want to wait till heaven to start learning how to praise the Lord. I want to lift my hands no matter how heavy they are. I want to lift my voice no matter how weak it may sound. I want to give praise to Jesus. I was once blind, but now I see. I was once deaf, but now I can hear. I was once hard-hearted, but now I believe. That's what Jesus did in my life. I was once in love with this world, and now I'm in love with Jesus. Praise His holy name. Amen? Amen. It goes on, and the 24 elders, which symbolize the church in heaven, and the four beasts, which are the living creatures that Ezekiel talked about, John saw. These are these holy cherubim, seraphims, these living creatures that are ever before the throne of God, giving worship and praise, saying, holy, holy, holy. 
How many know God is a holy God? And any religion that tells you that holiness is no longer needed is a false religion. Because Jesus is my holiness. And His righteousness has encloaked me. And I am now living in the righteousness of Christ through faith. Amen? Yes. It says that these four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat upon the throne. And they said, Amen, Hallelujah. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Jesus said it when He walked in. And next week is Palm Sunday, which we will... We having a message on that. I encourage you to come. But Jesus said in that even if the if these people would be quiet, even the rocks would cry out. Don't don't tell someone to quit praising the Lord. I was in a church service once where a, a husband and a wife were worshiping, and the wife they were both a little stiff, if you know what I mean. They 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 were a little stiff, but the Holy Spirit was moving, and the and the wife began to raise her hands and they started to get a little a little taller, a little higher. And her husband realized and saw what was happening. He reached up and grabbed the hold of her hand and literally was pulling her hand down. Yeah. Don't raise your hand and worship. Somebody will see you. And praise the Lord when he did that, she jerked from him and raised it even the, the, the taller. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't stop me from praising God. If I stop, the rocks will cry out. Glory. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to give glory to Jesus. I'm going to raise my hands and give glory to God. It says in verse 5, A voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you His servants. How many is a servant of God here today? Amen. So He's telling us to praise Him. He says, You that fear Him. How many fear the Lord here today? Amen. Yes. Fear God and have wisdom. Praise the Lord. If you want to know what is wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of it. Yes. If we don't have the fear of God, we're a fool, the Bible would teach. Amen? Yep. Fear God. Don't, don't fear man who can kill your body, but fear God who can not only destroy your body, but destroy your soul even in the flames of hell. That's who we better be serving. That's who we better be fearing. He says, praise the Lord to all of you that are His servants and that fear God, both small and great. So it don't matter whether you're little or big, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're Jew or Gentile, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. A child or an elderly, and anywhere in between, if you're small or great, whoever you are, if you're a child of God, give praise to Jesus Christ. And don't hinder those that are. Hallelujah. He says in verse 6, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, Hallelujah. If you want to know how many believers there are that has ever been, from Abel until the very last soul that will ever be saved, I can't tell you the number. The Bible says that it's numbered beyond numbered. But it says a great multitude, whoever that might be. However, many souls that have ever been redeemed, every soul that has ever been born again, a great multitude. And as the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thunderings, they said, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the church. The church's job, its duty is to give praise and glory to Jesus Christ because He's worthy. He gave His blood at the cross of Calvary. He redeemed mankind back to God. When man had no hope, had no place, when they were now the enemy of God, Jesus Christ came and gave His life's blood and redeemed sinful humanity back to God. If you've been redeemed, you better be praised in the Lord. If your heart has been once in sin, but now has been redeemed and born again, we better be giving praise to God. The only thing that I can see why someone would not give praise to God is either they're not born again or else they don't realize what Jesus did for them. They don't realize truly who God is and they're not in His presence at home to experience His love and His grace and His mercy. Their faith is misplaced somehow, some way. Because when you were once enslaved, and I'll tell you right now, if you spent years of your life as a literal slave, you were bound by chains and dungeons and pits and slime pits. And they'd 
Some man would pull you out from time to time and put you to work and beat you. and You were literally the worst of slaves. And suddenly some guy come along and he purchased you by a great sum. And he set you free. And then he took you after he took the chains off of you and he then gave you fancy clothes and he gave you a new name and he forgave you of all your sins. I guarantee you, you would probably love that man. You, if you heard other people put that guy down, you would say, no, 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 I'll tell you what he did for me. I was once a slave, but he came and he bought me. Don't put him down because he is wonderful. And you would begin to stick up for his namesake. And you would even be, be worthy to suffer shame because you believe in what he did for you. Yes. Well, see, that's what a person who has been set free from the slavery of sin would do. I was once a slave to sin. Satan ruled me. He told me where to go and I did it. I was like a, a dog that was chained by the powers of darkness. But Jesus came and with a great sum, his life bought me and broke the chains of sin that was all about me. That blinded my eyes to truth. And now I want to tell you today, don't put his name down. Don't you even think about using his name as profanity in my ears. Because he set me free. He bought me with his own blood. I am redeemed. And now I want to give praise to Him. Yes. And I'm going to start now because I know I'm going to for all of heaven, for all of eternity, forever without end, I'm going to sing praises to God. Yes. And I'll be the first to tell you, I don't have a pleasant voice. I can't sing on cue and on key. I don't even know how to find a key. They say it's a key of D and then somebody can hit that key with their boy. I don't know. I just start singing and I hope I'm there. And I, I'm usually not. And there's people who can fluctuate their voice, obviously, to find a key. I don't know. I'm, whatever key I'm in, that's what I'm in at the time. But praise the Lord, you won't ever find that I won't be praising. Amen. With a, with a happy, happy heart, I'll give praise to God. It might not bring happy ears, but it'll bring a happy heart. Praise the Lord. And that's how God's called us to be. To make a cheerful noise before the Lord. Because I've been redeemed. Yes. I will put on the garments of praise. And in my, in my house we will serve the Lord. Yes. And we will sing praises to Jesus Christ. Because I was once in sin, but now I'm, I'm not. Once I had the whole weight of sin on my soul. But Jesus redeemed me. And I want to give praise to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to sing hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you've been redeemed, praise the Lord with me. If you have been redeemed and set free, if you fear God and you're a servant of the Lord, praise Him with me. I've wondered, do, do believers need to know how to be taught to worship? And... In a way, I think perhaps there is an element of teaching there. But I have to just be honest. I, all I can look at is my own life. And I can't say anybody taught me how to worship. I just started to give God praise. And the Holy Spirit began to teach. And I think if you let free and you let go and you just respond to God in faith and you let the Holy Spirit have His way, you don't need a man to teach you how to worship because your heart will, will, will begin to follow after the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit begin to teach you and lead you how to give glory and praise to God. But if we are the church, we better be praising the Lord. Amen? And I'm not talking about just in the sanctuary. David said he was going to come to the sanctuary and praise the Lord. So praise God we get to do that Sunday morning, Wednesday night. But I'm talking about every day. Talk about in our home, sing praises to the Lord. Yes. When you're doing dishes, give glory to God. When you're driving, sing praises to the Lord. Don't worry what people... I mean, you've all seen that guy in the car beating out the steering wheel with drums, rocking out to some sort of demonic rock and roll music. You've all seen them. Well, you know what? If you're going to look in my car, we're going to be raising our hands, giving praise to the Lord. If you're driving, don't close your eyes, though, unless you're really, really in the Spirit. Because you're going to need the Holy Ghost to take over at that point. But you you just worship God. Amen? 
You just let the Holy Spirit have His way. And you'll begin to feel that garment of praise coming over you. And a bubbling of the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, you drink of my water and I'll give you living water that'll flow out the bellies of you and it'll be like nothing you ever had before. Amen. And it says He was talking about the Holy Spirit. He wasn't talking about about a drink from some well, like the woman of Samaria thought. She says, where is this water? And he says, I'm looking at you, baby. Hallelujah. You come and accept me, and out of your belly will flow the little rivers of living water. I want that in my life. I want the Holy Spirit to take over and just begin to lead me and draw me into His presence. I'm tired of trying to conjure up the Spirit because it don't work. Just yield and humble yourself before a mighty God. Sing hallelujah and praises yeah. to Him. Yeah. Put on the garments of praise and watch as the Spirit of God begins to flow through you. And you begin to feel your heart become light. And those burdens fall off your shoulders. And you just give praise to God. Amen? Amen. I want the freedom that comes from Jesus. The Bible says they that worship me must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's how I want to worship Him. Amen? Amen. Put on the garments of praise. Do you bow your heart with me this morning? Hallelujah.